Top Side, a short story from the Malfunction Universe, written by J.E. Parazzi. Had she done something wrong? Maybe they had found out about her and Victor. But how? They hadn't done anything that could have exposed their unconventional relationship. G5S89 stared at the dark, glossy eyes reflected back to her from the inside of her helmet. Tears? Were those tears? Her breath echoed through the close-fit helmet, joining into the thump of her pulse in her ears. In front of her, Victor's shoulders were squared, but his hands shook at his sides. He tried so hard. She still had a scar on her shoulder where he had stabbed her the last time so she couldn't pass the medical check. They were all out of favors to call in, though, and he couldn't even say goodbye to her. 589 looked down at the line of biobots waiting to be connected to their users. Two were Generation 3 biobots, 10 years older than her. They had been to the surface a few times. G3S30 had the scars to prove it. A wrecker had torn his arm clean off, and the silver scar from where they had sewn him back together served to remind everyone who looked at him of the power of aliens that waited above. The biobot beside her was one of her own generation. G5S04 was small for a biobot. He fumbled with his helmet for a moment, checking the straps one more time. His bionic spine stood out, stark against the golden skin at the base of his shaven head. He tucked his full lower lip between his teeth and shot 589 a brief, terrified look. Like her, he'd somehow managed to avoid going through that airlock before now. G5S369 on the far side of him had already gone up twice. His helmet was settled firmly in place and he stared ahead immovable, the way 589 should have been. Victor pressed the comm receiver, adhered to his Adam's apple spoke, his voice too low for her to hear. A moment later, he pulled open the door and waved them forward. 589's stomach dropped to the floor. She wasn't ready to die. She was only 19. She clenched her eyes shut and took a step forward, but before she could step through, a hand fell on her arm. Her mouth went dry. Victor wasn't supposed to touch her. If anyone saw him, he was going to get into trouble. Maybe even kicked out of the guard. She couldn't survive without him. If he left the compound, if she couldn't see his strong shoulders and smooth back in that gray uniform in front of her every morning, she wouldn't be able to breathe anymore. Dennis is on the cams. He kept his voice low as he pulled her to the side, away from any watching eyes. He said he'd give us a moment. 589 let her fists unclench. Weary lines creased in Victor's brow. He hadn't slicked back his hair today. The waves fell loose and black around his ears. A few days' growth clung to his normally boyish jaw. Ella... The whispered name planted a shard of warmth in her heart as he slipped his hand down her arm and gripped her fingers tight. Only the second time he'd held her hand. He wasn't willing to risk anything else, even when she wanted to. I'm so sorry. I tried so hard to stop it. We both knew it was coming. She squeezed her eyes shut to the battle, increasing the pressure building behind them. It wasn't fair that she had to make him feel better right now. He got to stay where it was safe. That wasn't entirely right. Victor cared about her in a strange, beautiful way, and somehow his fear was just as real as hers. Victor pulled the helmet off her head. He let it hang from one hand and traced the tip of his finger down her cheek. Her skin tingled with the warmth of it. You told me once that you wanted to kiss me, he said. Ella let a smile tug at the edges of her lips. No one was watching. This was the best goodbye she could have wished for. It wasn't every day she got a moment of freedom like this. Yes, she said, and I still do. Victor leaned forward and pressed his lips to hers. It wasn't at all like she had imagined it would be. His skin was soft and warm and soothing, but everything else was the same. The armor was still tight against her body, her tech still pressed up against her skin, and the airlock still sat open, waiting for her. I'll have you the whole way. 
His gaze dug into her. She nodded and pressed the helmet back into place. What else was there to say? If she waited any longer, she would start crying. She couldn't even remember the last time she'd cried. Biobots were built to be strong. They weren't allowed to have human weaknesses like fear or love or sorrow. Promise me you won't do anything stupid if... She paused, wishing she could cross her arms and legs and plant herself unmoving in the middle of the room. Just don't do anything stupid. She couldn't go back to her pod, not this time. This time she had to be brave. I'll be waiting for you when you get back, Victor said. The helmeted heads of the biobots in the airlock all swiveled to look at her as she stepped through the door. They wouldn't say anything. No one in that airlock would rob her of that, even if they were permitted to speak. The door behind her slid shut, obscuring Victor from her sight. Would she ever see him again? If she did, would she ever be able to kiss him again? Would she ever be able to enjoy it? The Gen 3 closest to the door went rigid. It was starting. His deep voice echoed through the calm in her ear. Test, test, this is her fort. I'm connected to G3S10. Ella had only been connected for practice sessions. Could she hold up under it for hours? It was just a routine check of the surface. There were biobots who did this hundreds of times. Of course, some never made it past their first. The Gen 5 biobot beside her stiffened, followed by the other Gen 3. At first, Ella almost didn't notice the early tendrils of the connection crawling up her neck. It started like cold fingers sliding over her skin. All too quickly, it turned into a shooting pain that enveloped her whole body and seized her head like a vice. She took her final free breath and focused her eyes ahead, refusing to bow to the increasing pain. Her hand lifted and flexed gently without her permission. Victor was there. This is Dutch. I'm connected to L to G five S eight nine. He almost slipped. Okay, you're all set to go, a voice said through the calm. The moment the airlock door opened was a waking nightmare. Ever since Ella could remember, her worst fear was stepping outside of the protective walls of the bunker. But it had always been inevitable. If she had control of her own limbs, she would have turned and ran the other way. Even as it was, she shook. Whether it was her own fear or Victor's translating through her limbs was impossible to know. All Victor's movements were familiar. He walked onto the lift with graceful ease of a soldier. Even here, under the surface, he took the high-power M rifle in hand and scanned every corner. After five years together, his gestures were as natural as her own. Victor had been to the surface with other biobots. He was practiced. He hadn't lost one yet. That was with two encounters with wreckers, too. The lift jerked and moaned as it started up, and Victor shifted easily to accommodate for it. He would take care of her. He had to leave her body in his care and just focus on managing the connection. The most terrifying stories were always of biobots who couldn't handle the pain and passed out topside. No one could do anything to help them then. Above Ella, the trap doors whined as they slid open, exposing the black sky above. The sky. It wasn't as impressive as she thought it would be. It looked no different than a room with the light turned off. The view unfolded dramatically as the lift leveled off with the ground. All around her, ice-crushed earth rolled out. It wasn't flat like she had imagined it would be, but wrinkled and crumbled up. Bits of ice and stone jutted up across the landscape. Victor scanned the horizon, following his eyes with the rifle's muzzle. Somehow, Ella had always thought that the first thing she'd see outside the compound would be a wrecker. The surface actually looked empty. The dome that marked the bunker's carefully guarded position behind her was the only sign of life, and even that could have just as easily been abandoned based on appearances alone. Four hours... That's how long it would take to check the perimeter for signs of roving record packs and ensure the security measures were still in place. From there, the drones would handle it. 
One of the Gen 3 biobots, whose number Ella couldn't remember, stepped off the lift and rested his chin against his rifle. Second position, he said, his breath echoing through the calm. Without question, biobots fell into a tightly packed line. The Gen 3 was the obvious leader, one of the senior officers. Behind him, two biobots took either side, keeping their guns in continuous motion. Victor positioned Ella in the back beside the smaller Gen 5. Victor was one of the better users, even if he was young. This was one of the more dangerous positions, not a place Ella wanted to be on her first run. The ground crunched under her feet as she walked, more a feeling than a sound. There was no sound up here, aside from what was contained in the helmet. Ella was filled with the rattle of her own breathing. No matter how many breaths her lungs grabbed, it wasn't quite enough. That wasn't Victor's fault, it was her own panic panic. She was panicking. How had she not even noticed that before? The way her vision faded in and out, or how her pulse jumped against her throat. But that was her. Or was that Victor? Victor wouldn't be so afraid. He knew what he was doing. She was the one who was out of her depth. Why did her blood feel so cold under her skin? It wasn't that way before. Victor seemed to feel the change too. He scanned the horizon, widening his search pattern. Everything looked the same. Endless expanses of frost-dusted earth under a dead sky. Nothing had changed except her heartbeat, which roared against her chest as if it were going to break right through her armor. In fact, what if it did? What if it beat so fast that it triggered the kill switch embedded beside her heart and blew her chest out? Why couldn't she calm down? She needed to go back. It was too much. How could she make Victor turn back? Pain burned in her head as she tried to pull away from Victor's control. She needed command of her own body. How could she fight it even if she couldn't move her own arms? How could she run? Lieutenant. Victor said, breathing through the fog in Ella's mind. She had to trust him. There was nothing else to do. You feeling this? You too? I was wondering if it was the untried skins, the short biobot said. I feel it, Dutch. No signs of warm bodies on the radar yet, so just keep your head up. Head up? Why would he say that? What were they feeling? She already knew the answer, and it sat in her chest like a knot. There was only one thing topside that could count as a warm body on the surface. Victor's grip tightened on the rifle and the pain in Ella's head hit a new level. She had to calm down or she would fry herself. Victor drew in a heavy breath for her and she did her best to take advantage of it. She trained her whole life for this. All she had to do was hold on to consciousness. Victor would take care of the rest. It was a worthless reminder. Terror was already set loose in her body, but she could control it. Blocking out the outside world, Ella focused on the tide of feelings rushing through her. Count the heartbeats. Count the breaths. The grounding exercises worked better when she could close her eyes, use her own fingers to keep track. But slowly her heartbeat began to regulate and her muscles quit aching. The connection was much kinder when you welcomed it into your body willingly. The fragile control Ella had over her emotions broke as a red light flared up on the map inside her helmet. Red was in a good color. What did that mean? Lieutenant, Victor said. The fear of his words trembled in Ella's throat. He wasn't supposed to be scared. He was supposed to be the one in control here. I see it. Act your age. Ella's stomach ached as Victor lowered her face up against the rifle stock. This was real. Her worst fear. It couldn't have just been an easy mission. Okay, boys and girl, sir, a masculine voice piped up. If you are offended by that, Suarez, you need to find yourself a new unit. We're looking at a loner here. We're going to pick it off before it can cause trouble. Ella struggled to keep her emotions from ricocheting off her insides like a loose bullet. She trusted Victor. She had to. She had to. She was going to throw up. Sir, I don't think that's a good idea, Victor said. We have a lot of untested biobots here, and there's never just one wrecker. Yes, they needed to go back inside. They needed to get out of this hell and never come back. What idiot ever thought that fighting these things was a good idea? The only way to survive was to hunker down behind the thickest walls possible and pray they didn't claw their way through. 
Dutch, if you keep testing me, I'll get you kicked and connect Pollock. You got me? The Gen 3 growled, following it up with a string of curses. Ella ignored the wave of agony sweeping through her body and focused on counting again. She couldn't control it if she was up here or not, but she wasn't going to lose Victor. If he disconnected, she would die for sure. No one else knew her. No one else even cared if she survived. Victor reacted to her freaking out. He wasn't like the others. He cared and he listened to her. Even when she couldn't speak, she had to quit broadcasting her fear to him. The red dot grew closer. Okay, boys, spread out and form a net. This thing doesn't get through. Victor swore and bit her tongue. He wanted to say something else. What? If only he could connect into her mind the way he could into her body. The Gen 3, the lieutenant had called Suarez, peeled off to the east, his long legs eating up the ground. Victor aimed the rifle at the approaching dot and glanced over at the short biobot to their left. He fumbled with something before following the other two and they spread out into the west. They inched forward, crouched down with guns poised. The red dot didn't even slow. The fear grew into an overwhelming force inside her. It was all Ella could do to keep from tearing away from the connection or trying and sprinting back to the hub. This feeling was the wreckers. She knew it. Somewhere in the back of her head, Victor warned her about it once. They messed with the mind and somehow evoking crippling fear. It was how they kept their prey from fighting back. That's all she was feeling. It wasn't real. It was a mind trick. Whether that was true or not was debatable, but she had to believe it. Something appeared on the horizon. The wrecker was so black it made the sky above look pale. It was everything Ella had feared and worse. It was massive, at least nine feet tall, with a broad, powerful body. Two of its forearms dragged on the ground as if it were using them to support his weight. It paused for a moment, and its face, pure bone, reflected the weak light of the sun. They were supposed to kill that? How? It was death itself. It's okay, I got you, Victor whispered. The words were not much comfort, but at least Victor knew what to do. What was that, Dutch? The lieutenant asked. Nothing, sir, just eager to get into it. Something flickered on the helmet screen and Victor's eyes flashed to it. A red light flared to life right on top of the Gen 5 beside the lieutenant. Victor spun around, training his gun on the spot as a threatening shape rose out of the earth like a living shadow. The Gen 5 started to run, but she didn't get far. The record charged forward on its knuckles, and with two large strides, it was on the biobot. Victor fired a single shot that clipped the beast's shoulder, sending a burst of maroon blood into the air. It roared soundlessly, shook its great body, and grabbed the biobot by the helmet. The crack of breaking glass and hiss of air filled the comms as a huge claw pierced the face shield and sank into the biobot's face. Shit! They're digging! The lieutenant yelled. Heads up! No telling how much are under us. Base, we need a sonic pulse. Tell us what we're standing on. The short biobot advanced towards the wrecker, trying to get in a shot around the body of the dead Gen 5, who flapped around in the beast's hands like a piece of cloth. The wrecker all about ignored them, dropping the corpse on the ground and pushing it around with one paw. It snapped its impressive fangs towards Ella before it turned its attention back to its prey. The body shuddered under its jaws as it strove to rip into the armor, pressing the corpse into the dirt. It got a grip and shook its head violently. Victor shot off a couple rounds and the record reared back its claws, ripping at the sky. The lieutenant delivered the final shot, a solid round right to the wrecker's face. It fell with the final twist, landing on the dead biobot with such force that Ella could have sworn she felt the ground shake under her feet. Grab that mod, Hastings, the lieutenant yelled. The short biobot jumped into action, sprinting towards the wrecker. Ella wanted nothing more in that moment than to call him back. Dutch, you're on four, the lieutenant continued. 
A flash of light erupted from the corner of Ella's eye. Victor turned, giving Ella a full view of the battle raging right beside her. Suarez and the body of the other Gen 3 lay down a line of fire only a few feet ahead of the other wrecker as it rushed them. Victor raised his gun. Suarez, get back, you moron. I can't get a shot. You don't need to. I got this, Suarez yelled as the wrecker stood on its hind feet, towering over the biobot. Suarez's confidence turned into a short scream as the wrecker grabbed for her biobot, its fists knocking him on the chest and flipping him head over heels. Victor took a few steps backwards, firing over the wrecker's head as it leaned over the Gen 3. What was he doing? They needed to get out of here, not get closer. Why was he trying to get its attention? It worked, unfortunately. The monster leaned forward on its hands, its tiny black eyes watching them from the hollow wells they hid in. Suarez scrambled back, her hands digging into the ground. She kicked aside the wrecker's hand as it reached for her and climbed to her feet, already running away from the beast. Shit! she yelled, pausing to look back. My rifle! Leave it, Victor said. Pull your sidearm. We aren't losing another Gen 3. The record hurtled after Suarez, its form dwarfing the body she occupied. Ella would have closed her eyes if she could, looked away. The guards didn't care. They could just connect to a new biobot and get back into it. But this was worse than torture for her. Once the wrecker had killed Suarez's biobot, it would come for her. Her first time on the surface, and this is how it would end. Hastings, the lieutenant yelled as Victor let loose a few more warning shots. Shit, he's kicked. Victor turned and Ella's stomach curdled. The short Gen 5 lay on the ground beside the dead Borg he'd been carrying, his body rigid like instant rigor mortis. Freeze protocol. Victor backed towards the biobot, keeping his gun aimed towards the wrecker. Suarez, get your ass over here and get this bot. Suarez panted into the mic, her breath catching as she changed her direction. Without warning, the record slowed its charge. It threw its head and twisted almost mid-air, ice and rocks spewing out from under its feet as it began to run in the other direction. Relief flooded Ella's chest as it moved away from them. Maybe they had scared it off. Did records even get scared? As long as Victor didn't go chasing after it, they were going to be okay. Even as the thought crossed her mind, the flood of red lights filled the corner of Ella's helmet. The blaze was so bright, she had to squint. Ah, uh, hell no. Victor murmured as the wrecker paused a few hundred feet away. He could close that in the space of a heartbeat. Get back to the compound, the lieutenant yelled. Finally, someone had the brains to run. Before turning to follow, Victor took one final shot at the wrecker. The beast jerked, thrown off balance by the powerful round, and lurched a few steps forward. It was coming back. They had to go. If only she could scream at Victor to force him to listen. There were more coming, and they hadn't even been able to manage two. Pain shot through Ella's head as they turned to go back. She had only gone a few steps when her legs melted under her, collapsing to the ground. She barely managed to keep conscious. The edges of her vision blurred, and her stomach turned. Automatically, she raised her hand to her face to stop the wave of nausea from spewing out as vomit. Her hand did as she wanted. No, that wasn't possible. She was connected. Victor was supposed to stay with her. Where had he gone? Ella raised her hand and flexed her fingers. Why were they working? She should be frozen. When a user got kicked without the right procedure, the biobot froze. That was the program. So what had gone wrong? Shaking, Ella looked ahead of her. The lieutenant was dragging Suarez, or the biobot she'd been using at least, back towards the compound. Dutch, Dutch, are you there? The words echoed in her helmet, punctuated by her gasping breath. The red light flashed in the corner of her screen still. Ella forced herself up on shaking legs. Immediately, the pain in her head raged, but she couldn't give in to that or into the swelling terror that rattled her very bones. Ahead of her, the smaller biobot, who'd been Hastings' ride, lay stiff beside the dead wrecker. Ella couldn't look to see what was behind 
Gripping her rifle with both hands, she sprinted towards the small biobot, G5S04, she could move, thanks to whatever glorious malfunction had happened in her body, but he was still frozen in place, helpless. If she didn't get to him, the wreckers would eat him alive, and he wouldn't even be able to scream. The ice challenged every step she took, and her legs didn't want to obey. Victor made it feel easy, but she wasn't used to ground like this. Every surface she'd ever walked or run on was polished and smooth. As she reached for 504, she stumbled and fell, landing on his side. The black sky above reflected in his helmet screen, obscuring his face. If she could see it, there was no doubt in her mind that it would speak the same terror that coursed through her. If she stopped to think about it, she would be as frozen as him. Hating herself for it, Ella turned for a glance behind. What was there was worse than her imagination supplied. The wrecker was only a couple yards away now, its black eyes roaring right through her. Blood dripped from its wounds. Frenzied hunger shook through its whole body. Ella couldn't control her fingers enough to aim, much less pull the trigger, and said she dragged herself to her feet and wrapped her hands around 504's arms. It would catch her in a second, but she had to try. It was better than laying down to die or leaving 504 there to take it for her. 504's body slid easily over the ice. If she had been able to keep full control of her footing, she might have actually been able to make some time. The worst part was now she had no choice but to face the wrecker as he barreled down on her. Screaming, Ella dropped 504. Half of her wanted to run, but she'd been trained for this. She raised her rifle, spilling out an ill-aimed volley of rounds. The wrecker stumbled sliding over the ground as one of her shots found a home in its knee. Ella didn't wait. She scooped 504 and put every ounce of strength she had towards dragging him back to where she thought the entrance to the bunker was. Her feet slid and her knees buckled as the ground gave way like a snapping bone. Ella careened backwards, pulling 504 with her into a black tunnel. Everything went dark, and for a moment she was sure she had passed out. The sound of voices through her calm dragged her attention away from her panic. G5S89, can you hear me? It was Victor. The pale light from above disappeared as a massive form leaned over her. The record had found them. It reached into the hole, its arms swiping the air only inches away from her. The ice over her spilled and rained down jagged shards like glass. Ella tried to back away, but any excess space was occupied by 504 and some sort of orbs that covered the ground and walls. She couldn't find her rifle in all the clutter. Either it was lost above or under 504. The wrecker strained at the opening of the cave, throwing aside rocks and chunks of ice as it slid its head and one shoulder in. Its bulk blotted out the last weak rays of the sun. One of its arm waved over her. She battled away the claws and struggled for her sidearm. 589, answer. Ella pumped the trigger of her gun, aiming it wildly towards the wrecker. Her sidearm didn't have near the impact of the rifle rounds. It was impossible to tell if any of them hit their target anyways without any light. 589, Victor's voice came over the calm filling her with a moment of calm. Before she could answer, a powerful hand closed over her arm, dragging her upward. She screamed, kicking and scrambling to pull away. The gun was trapped up against something solid. Its arm? Steadying the tremor in her hand, Ella squeezed the trigger. The beast released her, and she slid back down. A second later, a light flooded the cave, a glint off of 504's unmoving helmet reflective of a massive collection of round rocks choking the small space and clinging to the walls. Not rocks, eggs. This was what the records were digging for. They were digging for their nests right up close to the hub. Five, eight, nine, Tara tainted Victor's words. If you are able to answer, you'd best do so now. Despite his clear effort to sound commanding, the words came out more like a prayer. I'm okay, and I can move, but the record is going to be back any second. A gush of breath filled the calm. Okay, listen. 
Ella slid further into the cave. If a wrecker dug this and climbed inside to lay eggs, then a wrecker could fit back in and get to her. It wasn't a safe place to wait. The terror was starting to fade, though. Did that mean that the wrecker wasn't close? Quick, I need to move, she said. If she was talking to any other guard, she wouldn't have spoken like that, even in a situation like this. We can't risk more biobots for you. If you can move, then you need to get to the airlock. Do you remember where it is? Ella choked back a gasp. She was really alone up here. Why don't you reconnect? We had some sort of malfunction. Someone hacked in and the virus messed with our operations. Half of our systems are down. Ella slipped her arm around 504 and sucked in a few deep breaths. This was all her, as long as that crippling fear didn't come back. I've got the G5S04 here. He's frozen but alive. The calm was quiet for a heartbeat. Ella pushed up towards the surface. If the rucker was still there, it would take her head off the moment she got above the surface, but she couldn't waste time checking for it before she pulled 504 up. The pack was coming. Leave him, E L five eight nine. Just get back here. Ella gripped the edge of the pit, trapping the gun between her hand and the stone. Like hell, she whispered. Silence reigned on the other end. Victor couldn't say what he wanted to without breaking their cover. All the better. She had already nearly talked herself out of dragging five zero four along. She was supposed to be just like him. Leaving him defenseless to be torn apart was not an option she could consider. Digging the toes of her boots into the crisp dirt, Ella jerked herself the last few feet out of the hole, half throwing 504 up after her. She clambered out and scanned the surroundings. A few feet away, the wrecker looked up from where it was nursing its wounds. Its mouth opened in what should have been a roar. Shuddering, it climbed back to its feet. Ella's rifle hit her back where it hung from its tether. It must have been under her the whole time. She twisted it around and took aim, but let her eyes drift. The airlock lift sat wide open only a couple yards away, an easy sprint. Alone she'd make it with 504. The wrecker started forward, and before Ella could even think about it, she grabbed 504's shoulders and stumbled towards the lift. 504 bumped along behind her, shortening her stride. Her heart throbbed painfully, sending tingles of fear down her entire body. Everything in her screamed to give up, to collapse onto the ground in a ball and just escape the terror that flooded her mind. The dirt gave way to metal and she picked up her pace. She jumped onto the lift, shoving 504 on with a series of punches and tugs. The lift whirled to life, dropping down with more speed than seemed possible, grabbing her rifle Ella turned to look up just as the wrecker leaned over the open shaft. He grabbed the closing metal doors with all four arms, acidic saliva running down his massive fangs. The spittle dropped onto the platform beside Eliza's leg, sizzling as it began eating its way into the metal. Get that door closed, El! Victor's voice echoed through Ella's helmet. She steadied herself against the door and sucked in a deep breath, squeezing the trigger just as the wrecker released the powerful doors to reach down with one hand. The bullet disappeared into the wrecker's open mouth and jerked forward, slipping through the hole with a free fall. Its body bounced off the metal wall on the side and landed on the lift only inches from 504's body. Ella screamed, pulling herself back as the weight shook the platform and the gears groaned. The lift froze and everything in the small, dimly lit place seemed to freeze with it. The seconds seemed to tick by audibly as Ella stared at the record waiting for it to pounce on her. It didn't move. Hands shaking with fear, Ella dug the muzzle of her rifle into the wrecker's shoulder. It didn't respond, and it didn't seem to be breathing either. Did wreckers even breathe to begin with? Is it dead? Victor asked over the calm. Ella pushed the head to the side with the rifle and gagged at the blood and acid oozing from the wreckers' open maw. I think so, she whispered. Make sure we can't bring you back down until we know the threat is contained. Victor's voice strained over the calm. Sucking in a deep breath, Ella pulled herself to her feet and stepped over Hastings' still form. She felt stronger, braver. 
that had to count for something. If the wrecker were still alive, it would have been messing with her head still. She kicked the body, watching for any signs of life. It stared up at her, unblinking, shuddering at the empty blackness of them. She pulled her diamond-edged knife from its sheath on her thigh and stabbed it directly through the right eye. Okay, she carefully stepped around the puddle of acid forming around the monster's face. Okay, it's done. The lift jolted as it began its descent back down. For now, it was over. For now, she would have to go back. That is what she was built for, what she was born for. No matter how hard Victor and the others fought to change things, there were years of this weighing them down. Generations of dead biobots and generations that would follow Ella topside in the future. Generations of people with no names, no worth, just bullets in the proverbial gun aimed at the surface. This wasn't just up to Victor, though. Ella had just fought a wrecker, and she had won. Not only had she won, she had saved one of her brothers. That is what she had to do. Her handler hadn't saved her topside. She had saved herself. It might take some time, but the opportunity would come to do it again. When it happened, she couldn't be too afraid. She would have to be ready. When the time came to fight, she wouldn't hesitate. The lift hit the bottom and the airlock slid open, releasing the armor biobots who waited behind them. She would go back to the compound for now, trust in Victor and his friends to do what they could, but she wasn't going to be passive about being controlled. From now on, she was going to be looking for a way to win. She was strong enough. Dear reader, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this short story from the Malfunction universe. I fell in love with these characters in these short 5,000 words, and they wormed their way both into my heart and the Malfunction trilogy. So yes, expect more of them. If you want to see how their story turns out, be sure to pick up the Malfunction trilogy and the prequel novellas and start on the journey. And if you enjoy my writing, I've also written The Raven Tree Society, a series of short supernatural thrillers working together to tell one story. If you love CW Supernatural and the Lore Podcast and the Amazon Original Series, these novelettes are a good choice for you. If you want to keep up with my writing, be sure to head over to my website at www.jelaineparazzi.com and sign up for my newsletters for monthly updates and news about releases. Signed, J.E. Parazzi.